Today I want to show you how and why I've been creating full watercolour studies in my journal before I start my proper painting. I painted this little eastern yellow robin this week for a tutorial. Before I painted this one, I painted it in my watercolour journal. I'm not big on New Year resolutions, probably because I make them and I never keep them. But this year I resolved to work smarter, not harder. And one of the ways I decided to do that was to start painting more watercolour studies. Now when I say watercolour studies, I don't mean a quick thumbnail sketch to work out the composition or a painting that I can paint really quickly. I mean a full painting in my journal. That sounds like it might be more work, but I'm finding that it's not. I'm finding that it's saving me time and I expect that it will save me some money because I won't be wasting my expensive watercolour paper. Watercolour always surprises me. I start painting and I'm never sure how the final painting will turn out. We can't hide our mistakes when we paint in watercolour because the paint is simply too transparent. So for me, there's always a level of anxiety when I first start a painting. I find I'm anxious because I don't want to fail, but I'm also anxious because good quality watercolour paper is expensive and I don't want to waste it on failed paintings if I can help it. By painting a study in my journal before I start the painting, I can iron out most of the wrinkles that are likely to occur. I can play around with the painting in my journal and see what works and what doesn't work. I can make decisions about lots of different things before I start my proper painting. I can experiment. Experimenting in the journal lowers those levels of anxiety and I find that I can begin painting with a much calmer approach. So I'm doing everything I can to set myself up for success. I drew the robin in my journal. This is a Winsor & Newton watercolour journal. At this point I wasn't sure whether I was going to paint the feet in and the branch, so I didn't draw them in at this stage. So once I got my drawing right, then I started to paint in the grey feathers. And this allowed me to work out whether I was going to paint the feathers in individually or whether I was going to paint them all as a whole. So I decided to wash them in all at once. And then while that was wet, I dropped in another colour just to make the grey more interesting. I find that this first wash is always the freshest and most vibrant, so I want to make sure that I get it right. When that was dry, I could paint the yellow feathers in, and I had some decisions to make here. There's more than one colour yellow on the bird's chest, so I had to decide what colour I was going to use to paint that darker area that I could see on the reference photo. I also had to decide whether I wanted to put this darker colour on the damp paper or whether I wanted to paint it wet on dry. There was some feather detail that I could see on the reference photo. I had to decide whether I was going to include that or leave it off. So I put it on on this study just to see what it would look like. Here I'm painting on some more feather detail. I wasn't sure whether I needed more or whether I should leave this section off. So I put it on again just to see what it would look like. And by seeing it here on the study, I decided to leave it off my painting. When painting birds, it's always important to get the beak right. So I like to spend a bit of time on the beak and make sure I've got the shape right and the colour. So I was able to work out how I was going to paint the beak on this little study. There was some detail around the eye that I wanted to include, but I wanted to see what it would look like and I wanted to see how much of it I should include. So here I was able to work out just how I'd paint that area around the eye. So this allowed me to determine just how much information I needed to give.
after I painted the flight feathers in, I thought they looked a bit stiff. So then I decided that if I put this wash over the top of them, that that would soften the look of them. So then I got down to the feet and the legs and I was thinking at this point that I would leave the feet off, that I'd just paint the legs in and then just leave a suggestion of some feet. But after I did that, I realised I didn't like it. So it's good that I determined it on this study before I started doing this on my painting. So I looked at that and I thought, no, that's just not working. So then I knew I had to draw the bird's feet in and the branch that it's standing on. And I went ahead and painted it and I was able to work out the colours that I was going to use and how I was going to paint it. Sometimes the feet can be a bit tricky and I don't want to put too much detail on the feet. So I was just able to have a play around and see what I liked and what I didn't like. And also how much detail I wanted to put on there. And then once I finished painting the bird, I had to decide whether or not I was going to paint a background. If I was going to paint a background, how was I going to paint it? Was I going to fill the entire background in or just put a splash behind the bird? And what colours would I use? So I was able to play around with what I was thinking I would do on my main painting. I was just trying to determine where I should put this splash behind the bird. Where I should stop it, what shape it should be. So I was able to determine quite a few different things from this little painting that I did in my journal. This painting in the journal allowed me to see that the back leg was too long. I needed to make sure that I didn't do that on the main painting. The feet, I wasn't sure whether to paint them in or not. So the painting in the journal meant that I was able to make a decision on that. The branch was tapering at the top and I need to watch that I don't do that on the main painting. And I was able to make decisions about the background by painting it in the journal first. All of these things I could work out before I put my brush to the paper and I was able to paint this painting with ease. I was relaxed when I painted it and I painted it quickly with minimal fuss. I did the same thing with this koala painting here. I painted it in my journal first and when I came to paint the larger painting, I painted it with ease as well. It made the process of painting so much more enjoyable. This painting is the subject of my next Skillshare class and Skillshare are kindly sponsoring this video. I've been working with Skillshare for a few years now and I really appreciate their support. I've published 10 classes now and I'm currently working on this 11th one. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes. There is so much to explore and there are real projects that you can create. Topics include illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing and more. Skillshare is also affordable when compared to expensive face-to-face -face classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 US a month. I'm currently enjoying this class by Sorel Amore. It's called YouTube Success. Build an authentic channel that's worth the follow. Sorel is a YouTuber, photographer and videographer. And this class is all about growing your online presence authentically so that you can enjoy a long-term career with platforms such as YouTube. She talks about the importance of finding your niche and being authentic and she takes you behind the scenes of her own work. Make 2020 a year where you explore new skills or just improve the skills you already have. 
Try some of my classes and you'll have access to thousands of other classes as well. I've found lots of different classes that have both surprised and inspired me. Because Skillshare are sponsoring this video, I have a link for you in the description. The first 500 subscribers to click the link will get two free months of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Okay, back to this. As I said, I painted this painting for my next Skillshare class and I want to give you a quick look at the study that I painted in my journal. With this study in my journal, I could work out the colours I was going to use. I could work out the technique I was going to use to paint the fur. I decided to use a wet on wet technique for most of this painting. It also helped me to decide what to leave off and what to put on, what was important, what wasn't. I wasn't sure whether to use the same colours as the koala on the branch or whether I should go for warmer colours. So this allowed me to try out the warmer colours and see what they look like. Although it takes time to paint a small study, I find that time isn't wasted. So I highly recommend painting a study of the painting before you paint the proper painting, particularly if you're not feeling confident. For me, it takes away most of the anxiety that can sometimes creep in whenever I start a new painting. And I don't want that anxiety to hinder my creativity. Okay, thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and make sure you hit the subscribe button because I post videos like this one every week. I'll see you soon. Painting in the journal allowed me to see that the black, the black leg, this allowed me to see that the black leg was too long. To make sure that I didn't do that on the main painting. Didn't, didn't, say didn't Louise. Didn't, didn't. I've been working with Skillshare for a few years now and I really appreciate their support. Motorbike. So if you want to make 2020 a year where you explore new skills, <coughs> now I can't say skills. <coughs> for me, it takes away most of the anxiety. I can't say anxiety now. <laughs>